What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy Dan from Dark Previews, and today I'm going to take you through the most comprehensive NBA player prop preview for the NBA Finals Game 2 between the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks. If it's your first time checking out the channel, I encourage you to subscribe because I'm doing videos just like this every single day. I share my screen, we go through Outlier, I take you through the plays that I like, the things that I don't, we talk about form lines, matchups, odds, you name it, I've got you covered. Now if that sounds interesting, let's go. All right, so we're taking a look at the box score from the first game. The Boston Celtics won 107 to 89. They really crumbled that Dallas offense. Game two, there should be some adjustments. I'm really keen to see how these teams bounce back, but let's take a look. All right, let's talk through these Dallas Mavericks first. We had Derek Jones Jr., 5.6 boards. Pretty inefficient on offense, but great rebounding output. PJ Washington, 14 points, 8 rebounds. A pretty strong game from him, and he didn't make a three-pointer. Daniel Gafford, quiet. He had eight points, three rebounds, only got 14 minutes in this game. We saw Kyrie Irving had 12 points, two assists, and three boards, six from 19, so a poor effort from him. Luka Doncic had 30 points, 10 rebounds, and only one assist in that game. A lot of three-pointers. Derek Lively only scored two points. Foul trouble, but still played more minutes than Gafford with 18, had five boards off the bench. Jaden Hardy had 13 points and three rebounds off the bench, so outscoring Kyrie Irving in only 10 minutes. Josh Green got a lot of game time, but not many shot attempts. Cassie Kleber had 18 minutes and only took one shot. Looking into the Boston Celtics, what do we see? Uh, Jalen Brown started off that game on fire, finished with 22 points, six boards, 58% from the field, so strong from him. Tatum only had 16 points, but had 11 rebounds and five assists. Al Horford was great, 10 points, 7 boards, 3 assists. So his line was at 6.5. That would have been moved up to at least 8.5 in this game, I imagine. But we did cash on Al Horford. Derek Wright, uh, White, D. Light, 15 points and 5 assists and only 2 rebounds. Drew Holiday had 12 points, 8 rebounds and 5 assists. Kristaps Porzingis, 20 points in his return in only 20 minutes. And he also had 6 rebounds to go along with his 3 blocks. And Sam Hauser got some game time. 16 minutes, had eight points, uh, four boards. Peyton Pritchard, 15 minutes off the bench, zero from seven, did not score a point. Uh, there's a few that I'm really keen to look into that I think are capable of a bounce back here. Uh, Kyrie Irving being one of them. Luca should bounce back to improve. Uh, PJ Washington, we can probably expect more of the same from him. Um, a lot of these Dallas, Dallas players, you can probably expect more of the same, really. Derek Jones Jr., nine shots. That was a surprise. So if the volume remains, he could go over. Um, but this Boston is probably a little bit more harder to predict. They've got a lot of... Uh, a lot of. You can see that they got 10-plus points from six different players. Paul Zingas, we should see some regression, I'd say, but it really depends on his minutes. Drew Holiday, solid as a rock. Jason Tatum, capable of a lot more. His lines come down, so we'll see where that goes. Very similar to Jalen Brown. Capable of a lot, but will they deliver? Um, but... Yeah, so a few different leans. So let me take you through it. I'll jump into outline now and we can get busy with the preview. All right, like we always do, we're hitting up the road team first, uh, starting with Luca in this game. Um, yeah, look, he was pretty good. Limited time. Could have been a lot better too. So despite his low performance, I bet his lines have moved up. And yes, they have. So starting with his points line, 32.5 for Luka Doncic. Um, in head to head matches, he's covered this in three out of his last five against Boston. In the so far in the playoffs, if we look at his last 10 games, he's covered this in only three out of his last 10. Uh, despite that, he's lost at 31.5 in the last game. It's moved up to 32.5. Um, and to be honest, I'd probably have to lean to the over. That last game, 30 points in 38 minutes. You'd expect more than 40 for Luca if the game was a lot closer. In that game, 12 from 26 attempts, 4 from 12 from deep. And only two from five from the free throw line. So didn't get to the line very much at all. Um, so I'd expect Luke, for Luca and the Dallas Mavericks to be better. And in order for them to be that way, I think he scores more points. So I do lean to the over for Luka Doncic, especially scoring. The one thing um, why I like Luka and Kyrie to possibly go over their lines in this game is you would have noticed every time they drive the ball, uh, the help defense, necessarily helping on Luka and Kyrie. They're doing everything they can to prevent the lobs. So Lively, Gafford, wildly ineffective in that last game. So when Luke and Kyrie drive, I expect in this game, all eyes on the rim, getting those layups. So I do like that for Luca. Uh, the other look I like for Luca is his rebound line. It's a line that I loved in the first game. Thankfully, it didn't move up too much. Went from 8.5 to 9.5. 
Um, but at the same time, he still cashed in 10. And we know that his minutes were down. So his cash is in eight out of his last 10 games and in head-to-head matchups, three straight games against the Celtics. So last game where he had 10 boards, only 14 rebound chances, um, which I would expect more of in this game if he gets more minutes, more opportunities, and Dallas seem somehow close the gap against Boston. Unless there's another blowout, then this ain't gone cash. The other reason I like this bet is Luka Doncic um, playing a lot more off-ball defensively. So hunting him, they're looking for him, but in a lot of those matchups, he did okay. Uh, they're playing five out of the Boston Celtics, Luka Doncic, PJ Washington. They're going to be the key rebounders for Dallas in this game. So I do like Luka to go over his boards. The other player that I do like for Luka is his first quarter assist. Now, I don't like him to go over. I actually like him to go under this. Under 1.5. It's a plus money play. Plus 145. And you know how I feel about plus money. Now, Luca has gone under this in five consecutive games against the Boston Celtics, which is wild. The other key point there, his potential assists are very low in the first quarter. If we look at his last 10 games, he's gone under in six out of his last 10. Um, his potential assists, very low against Boston. He's only getting one potential assist per game against them. And why is that? Well, Boston, they fancy themselves to defend Luca and Kyrie one-on-one. They switch on a lot of screens. They're switching on everything. So it's one-on-one the whole time. Luca doesn't necessarily have anybody wide open to pass to. They're letting Lucas, not letting Lucas score, but they're prioritizing him scoring and they're really cutting off those assists. So the first quarter assist play at plus money, I might have talked myself into it already. Um, let's have a look at his assists. His line for assists is at 8.5. He has cashed this, uh, let me just check, five out of his last 10 games, averaging 7.8 assists. In head-to-head matchups, three out of his last five. But that last game, that's a career low for him in the playoffs. Only one assist for Luka Doncic. He only had seven potential assists in that game. So it's not that he was passing and people weren't making shots. Man was passing um, <laughs> to himself in order to shoot it. So the shots uh, are there for Luka, 26 shots, only central assists. So whoever he's passing to is not being left wide open or they're not taking the shots. So the potential assists are low, so I'd have to lean to the under on that. Um, but in terms of the value, I think first quarter on first quarter unders in his assist really catches my attention. So that's the way that I'd be leaning. Um, but his three point is made prop is a three point five. I could be entertained, and it is three point five at minus one nineteen. I'd honestly lean to the over for this one as well. Lucas shot twelve three point attempts in that last game. He only made four of them at thirty three percent. He's going to take a very similar number. I'd lean to the over for Lucas three pointers, um, but I probably, yeah, I like some of the unders, like some of the overs. So if you want to see what I eventually land on, uh, check out my winner ball. You'll see my bets, but I think you can get a good idea of which way I'm headed for Luca. Now let's have a look at Kyrie Irving. Pretty poor in that last game, admitted it himself. Got the shots he wanted, uh, just didn't make them. So looking at his points prop though, 22.5 uh, plus money to the under, minus one to the over. So he's covered this in three out of his last 10 games. He's averaging 21.2 points. Um, I don't want to say he's a bit of a beast, but that logic really does apply for Kyrie. Back him for a really low under or a really high over by the looks of it. If we look at the head-to-head matchups, he's only covered in two out of his last six against Boston. He hasn't had a big game in Boston. So these are his games at Boston since he joined Dallas. 18, 20, 19, and 12 points. So the two games where he has covered this, both of them were home games in Dallas. But I'd probably lean to the over. Well, I am leaning to the over, not probably. Definitely leaning to the over here for Kyrie Irving because the one thing I did like about that last game was the volume. He took 19 attempts. He shot 32% from the field, which wasn't great. He was zero from five from deep. So, um, And he didn't get to the free line. So I see a lot of upside in Kyrie in this game. He couldn't go off the 30 points. I don't know, but... Um, that's where my mind goes. So I do like over for his points. Taking a look at his assist prop now, 4.5 is the line. He's gone under this in four straight games against Boston. He's hit this in, he's gone over in four out of his last 10 games overall. So he's averaging 4.8 in his last 10, averaging 3.6 against the Boston Celtics. Now in that last game, he only had two assists. I think the Mavericks only had five that whole game or something. But he only had three potential assists. Why I like the under for Kyrie. Minus 122 to the under. Um, and the whole reason is the potential assists, if he's going to get five assists, you need to see, what, nine, eight to nine to ten potential assists. Now, if we look at his last ten games, he hasn't really gotten to that number too often. 
And against the Boston Celtics, especially as of late, meaning this season in three games, seven, seven, and three potential assists for Kyrie Irving. So for him to make the jump from two to five, it's a pretty big jump because you need him to not only pass the ball a lot more, but you need whoever he passes the ball to to make shots. And I don't know if that's going to happen in this game. So um, I do like the under in his assists, his rebounds. I've got no real lean for that. 3.5. He's averaging 4.5 against Boston in his last 10. He's averaging 3.1. He's hit this in four of his last 10. So yeah, I've got no lean there on Kyrie rebounds. I think the points and assists is where the value is. Uh, For those of you who are thinking about the under in his first quarter points, um, I'd be a little bit cautious with it. The volume, the aggression is there. Believe it or not, the volume's been there for the last five games. He's taking five to six shots in the first quarter. The problem with Kyrie is not making those shots. So if he comes out even more aggressive, he could definitely go over. You can see prior to that last game, he had gone over his first quarter points prop in four straight games against the Celtics. So I'm choosing not to play Kyrie on the first quarter. I do like some of his other props, though. who else is there from this Dallas team that's worth talking about? Let's go with PJ Washington. PJ, pretty strong game. His line's at 12.5 points. He's now covered this in seven consecutive games against the Boston Celtics. Wow, wow, we were. Um, if we look at his last 10, he covered this in five out of his last 10 games, though. That last game where he scored 14, he had 36 minutes, took his usual 11, att- 11 attempts. Did get to the free throw line quite a bit, though, which is nice. Didn't shoot very well from three. So for PJ Washington, I feel like his lines a lot of the time are uh, pretty much spot on because he's distant. Um, 12.5. Yeah, I think it's right on the money, to be honest. Put him for 10 for your parlays. That's what I'm saying. But I don't know where to go with his points prop. If you have a look at his rebound prop, though, 5.5 was his line in the last game. It's still 5.5, but it's juice to the gills. Minus 140. So he's hit this in seven out of his last 10 games, averaging 7.3 rebounds against Boston this season. Since he's been with Dallas, it's only been two games. And in those games, seven and eight boards for P.J. Washington. And this is all because of the way that the Boston Celtics play defense. If they're going five out, then Luka and P.J. are going to get these boards. So the rebounds I do like. I don't like them at these odds at minus 140. But um, I'm going to take this down on my list. All right, check to see what else is good for these Mavs. We'll have a quick look at Daniel Gafford. Now, I'm not taking any bets on Daniel Gafford because all signs point to an under, but I've noticed the lines are starting to move that way too. Um, His points line at 7.5. If we look at his last 10 games, he's only gone under this line once. So he's gone over in nine out of his last 10, including that last game where he scored eight points. The concern for me, Daniel Gafford only got 14 minutes in that last game. And what's crazy is... He got extra minutes in that last game because Derek Lively was in foul trouble. So Daniel Gafford, as the Boston Celtics play five out, struggling defensively. So um, I probably lean to the under. Not a, I'm going to take. The hit rate is crazy. He could easily get four dunks in five minutes. So um, that's my thoughts on Daniel Gafford. The look for him is on his rebound. That line's at 4.5, so it's come down. Um, was it 5.5 once upon a time? Been rebounding great in the prior two series, but this Boston team held him to three rebounds in his 14 minutes. And he did have eight rebound chances, though. But yeah, 4.5, I'm not a big fan of that either way. The other good look here could be uh, Daniel Gafford not to get a block. Now, I say that because this all ties into the Celtics playing five out, not attacking the rack if Daniel Gafford is in there. He got zero blocks in his 14 minutes in the last game. If you've been tailing these videos, we took Miles Turner under his block prop time and time again against the Boston Celtics and had a pretty good hit rate with that. In head-to-head matchups, he's hit this in two out of his last four, though. So this is a strong lean. I'd like that it's plus 174, though. So the odds for this are great. I'm just not too sure whether I'm going to take it or not. So there's the DGAF. Um, let's have a look at... Derek Lively, much in the same mold as Gafford, will get more time because he can move his feet uh, and he has some length. But his prop, I'm a little bit unsure of. He only had two points in that last game. He's cashed this in one out of three games against Boston, um, but only attempted one shot. So line at 6.5. I don't know what you do with this type of info. His rebound line at 6.5 could be interesting, though. Five boards in that last game. One out of three against the Boston Celtics. Uh, challenges, rebound chances. He only had eight chances in that last game. So, yeah, it might be a little bit difficult. So, I'm liking PJ Washington and Luca to get boards for these Mavs. The bigs, unfortunately, I'm not overly keen on to get rebounds. And if they do, it might kill some of my other bets. But 
want to look at Jaden Hardy real quick. So I did take his over in points. I also took him for 10 points in that last game. So I want to take a look to see where his lines are at now to see what we take. So his points line at 4.5. Take a look at his last five games. He's cashed this in five straight. Uh, he only got 10 minutes of that game against Boston, but scored 13 points in that time span. So I do like the over in his points in this. But what I am ultimately taking, or this is where my gut's telling me to go, is his PRA. 5.5 is a PRA. He's more than capable of covering this in points alone. But what he, what he does add in a few is some rebounds. So in his 10 minutes, he can get one or two rebounds, which really helps with this. Because there's a chance as well where he only finishes with four points and you might need a rebound or assist to get you over that line. So yeah, Jaden Hardy, I like the PRA. The points look good too, don't get me wrong, but I'll probably go with the PRA depending on what odds I can find. Who else we got up in here? Josh Green, he's playing minutes, but he's not taking shots. Um, I think Derek Jones Jr. could be a good look. I don't like his scoring profile and stuff like that. It's, a, it's an awful matchup, Jones Jr. But what was surprising was his, not his minutes, but his field goals attempted. So he attempted nine shots in that last game, only made two of them, uh, one from two from deep. So he was back in the rim, he just missed a whole lot of layups and contested shots inside. Um, he has gone under in five shots of Boston Celtics, though, for those of you who like the under. The concern with the under is the volume. So, yeah, that makes me a little bit hesitant for Dallas. They're a pretty easy team to bet on. Um, it's Luca, Kyrie, PJ Washington, and Gafford, Lively, depending on the matchup. And this is not the matchup for Gafford or Lively until uh, they prove me wrong, really. But let's jump to these Boston Celtics real quick, see what's cooking over here. We'll start with Jason Tatum. Points line, 26.5, 25.5 is where it's sitting. Uh, we can see he's covered this in out of his last 10, averaging 27 points per game. In head-to-head -head matchups, he had cooked the Dallas Mavericks in four straight games prior to that last one where he only finished on 16 points. Uh, he played 42 minutes, had 16 attempts. And I say this in the last pre preview, it's if the problem with these Boston Celtics, what makes them difficult to bet on is that they're so deep all it takes is one person to go off, and that means everybody else is going to go under. Chris Jobs had a pretty strong game. Derek White was the only person to go over their point sign from their starting lineup, and by over, he went by 0.5. Um, he was also the only person I said that is unimpacted by Chris Jobs Porzingis. Tatum went under. Jalen Brown went two points under. Drew Holiday went half a point under. Um, and Chris Jobs went like four points over his line. So, um, yeah, I bet Jason Tatum points props, but it's... Um, outside of this first quarter points prop. So what I'm looking at here is taking the under 6.5 points in the first quarter for Jason Tatum. So it's cash in three out of his last five against Dallas. And in his last 10 games, it's only cash in three out of his last 10. So why the hell would I be taking that bet? Well, Chris Stops came back. And as we know, I bet on Chris Stops in the first quarter of that last game because they feed the rock to him like crazy. Him and Jalen Brown get first priority in the first quarter. Because Jason Tatum tends to take a back seat. And at 6.5, you can get it at 7.5, but I'm taking the 6.5 for better odds here. Um, you can see here in his last 10 games with Chris Stops in the lineup, he's gone under in six out of his last 10, averaging 6.2. If we look at the season data, He's under in 61% of games with Chris Stapps pausing this in the lineup where he averages 5.9 points per game. He's versed the Dallas Mavericks with Chris Stapps in the lineup twice, um, both of those games this season, and Jason two points and then three points. So he's going to get the game time, which makes this a little bit sweaty, but he shouldn't take as many shots as he had been when Chris Stapps was out. So I do like the under for his first quarter points. Let's have a look at his assist prop. That's at 5.5. He's cashed that in one of five games against the Dallas Mavericks. He had five assists in that last game. Looking at his potential assists, he had 14 potential assists. Numbers are high. And at 14 potential assists, you'd have to lean to the over. But again, not a bet that I'm feeling. Uh, Rebound-wise, 9.5. I'm all over this for Tatum. I was on it the last game, and I like it again. Um, and nothing changes. He will defend the bigs defensively uh, just so when the, the Mavs do their pin rolls. Tatum can do some switching, so he'll spend a lot of time there. And he'll also rest, spend a little bit of time on the weak side and just get some easy boards. That last game against Dallas, 11 rebounds, 15 rebound chances. Still got 42 minutes despite the blowout. So Tatum's going to be on there. He's going to get a lot of game time. Those chances should still be there. Both teams pretty decent defensively. Um, and if the Boston Celtics miss a few shots, there could be some offensive rebounds available. But Jason Tatum, I do like his over in boards. Um, what's the other look? His three-pointers. Man, I never bet on Jason Tatum. He hit his three-pointers, but he has hit it now in two straight games against Dallas. 
But uh, nothing, nothing else that's really popping out for me, Jason Tatum. Next up, we take a look at JB, Jalen Brown. Now, Jalen Brown, he was on track to absolutely smash this line. But did he? Nope. So 23.5 points is the line. 22 points in the last game. Three out of his last five against Dallas. Looking at his last 10, seven out of his last 10 games. So Jalen Brown is in great form. The main challenge that you'll find if you bet his points prop is going to be the field goal attempts. So it's all about volume. Um, against the Pacers, volume was very high. The matchup made sense um, against Dallas. And he took 12 shots in the last game in his limited minutes, despite getting off to a hot start. He did get to the free throw line a lot, though. And check that out. Six from 11 from the line. So he left a lot of food on the table. So for anyone who bet his overs in the last game, I feel sorry for you because he should have cashed that. Six from 11 from the line, 55%. Nah. So Jalen Brown will probably lean to the over, to be honest, in his points prop. Um, not a bet that I'm going to take. That's definitely the way that I'd be leaning. Jalen Brown over in his points prop. His first quarter points prop could be a good look too. 4.5. I only had four in the last one, but Christoph Porzingis went mad. So Porzingis eats first and then Jalen Brown eats after. And that's pretty much how the Boston Celtics played their first quarters. His assist line, 3.5. I did lean to the over in the last game, but he only had two assists. He had eight potential assists, though. Check that out. So he's moving that ball around, and blokes just weren't making their shots. So I'd lean to the over in his assists, but another player that I'm not necessarily playing. I don't think I'm betting anything on Jalen Brown in this game, to be honest. His rebound line at 5.5. He had six rebounds that last game, six out of his last 10 games. And in head-to-head -head matchups, he's cashed this in three out of five games against Dallas versus him three times already this season, three, seven, and six. So 13 rebound chances that last game. So I probably lean to the over, but I don't love the rebounds there for Jalen Brown. One thing to keep in mind if you're looking at the data from that first game, you got to keep in mind that the Dallas Mavericks were bricking everything. So almost every player for the Boston Celtics went over their rebounds line, except for Derek White. So the rebounds were bouncing for everybody. If Dallas are expected to be a little bit better in this game, like the line suggests, then you probably won't see rebounds going to everyone. So yeah, I'd be a little bit cautious betting on the Boston Celtics rebounds, unless you think it's going to be another blowout, right? And the Mavs continue to struggle. Uh, next up is Christoph Porzingis. Now let's talk about it. I took him for the first quarter points prop in the last game, and I didn't even know if he was going to play. Next minute, he, we get told, uh, what, an hour before tip-off, Christos Porzingis starting off the bench. And I was like, oh, my first quarter points prop is dead. And then he comes on and absolutely smokes it. What, 13 points or something in the first quarter? Man, we're wild. But let's look at his points prop first. 15.5. He scored 20 points in that last game. Two games against Dallas this season. 24 and 20 points for Christos Porzingis. He only played 20 minutes in that last game. And I wonder... Is there some sort of minutes restriction, or was that purely because of the blowout? How much would they be willing to play Chris Stops is what I'm thinking. At 15.5, and given I think Dallas makes some adjustments, they can't get cooked by this guy again. Look, I'd probably lean to the under, but it, it's not a bet that I'm going to take. What I do like about Chris Stops for this particular game is the stuff in the first quarter. Like I mentioned, he gets to eat first. They look to feed him early and often. Um, if you look at his first quarter points in the two games against Dallas this season, 13 and 11 points for Kristaps Porzingis. The line's still at 3.5. is quite juiced. Um, I'd take it for 4.5, get the plus money. That's what I'm thinking, take him for five points. Shit, you might even want to ladder him up to 10. I'll leave it up to you. But I do like the first quarter points prop for Kristaps. The other prop that I actually like for Kristaps is the first quarter rebound props. This is a plus money play, plus 102. He had three rebounds in the first quarter of that last game. So he's covered this in one of two games against Dallas. But if we look at his last 10 games, he's covered two rebounds in the first quarter in nine out of his last 10 games. On the regular season, 46 out of 62, a 74% hit rate of Kristaps Porzingis covering his first quarter rebound line. So I do like that. Now, if we take his actual rebound line, 5.5 for Kristaps, 69% hit rate on the season. But he is playing less minutes. He has recorded six plus rebounds in both games against Dallas so far this year, though. So I'd probably lean to the over there, but at minus 135, not something that I want to play with. Lastly, you might be interested in his three pointers made prop. Line is at 1.5, minus 120. He hit two three pointers in that last game in 20 minutes. He was two from four. In the game he played earlier this season, he was four from eight. So I think Chris Dobbs took over his three point prop. I think that's a really good look. One from. Um, 1.5. I don't mind Kristaps to score some, but I do like the first quarter stuff. 
for Christoph Porzingis. Next up, let's go Drew Holiday. Now, Drew Holiday's point sign, 12.5. Now, against the Dallas Mavericks, he's covered this in three out of his last five. This season, though, 17, 11, and 12 points for Drew Holiday against the Mavs. His minutes are pretty decent. His shot attempts, he only he took nine attempts in that last game. His last two games, six and nine attempts, which is not necessarily high. But in each of those games, someone else, one of his teammates has been cooking. So there's no real... Uh, necessity for him to get those buckets and those shots up. So I'd probably be a little bit hesitant putting on Drew Holiday points. His assist, 4.5. He's covered this in five straight games against the Mavericks. Averaging six assists per game in his last 10. Five out of his last 10 games, he's gone to the over. 4.7 as an average. I'd probably lean to the over on the assist side here for Drew Holiday. Uh, having a look at his potential assists, he had no potential assists, which is not crazy high. Um, but at the same time, he only played 34, 34.9, so 35 minutes. So uh, you could argue he gets close to 40 minutes. This game been close. His rebound line is at 5.5. This, he's been rebounding like a beast. Uh, eight rebounds in that last game, nine in his last two against Indiana, and in head-to-head matchups, three out of his last five against Dallas. So, um, yeah, 14 rebound chances, which is huge, but it could brick in everything. So some of these rebound numbers could be somewhat inflated. So just be cautious of that. But yeah, probably a lot of strong leans here on the Drew side. Assists and rebounds are lean to the over, but he's not typically the type of player that I like to bet on. Uh, where is he? Derek Light. D. White. He's playing 14.5. I called it out in game one. Uh, he's the only player from the Boston Celtics. Not the only, but he sees the he sees the smallest uh, reduction in his shot attempts and points when plays compared to all the others. Whereas Derek White, he's covered this line in six of his last 10. Five out of his last six games. In head-to-head matchups, that was the first time he'd covered this line in five games against the Dallas Mavericks. Um, in that game, he got 35 minutes, only 11 shots, three from eight from downtown. So, yeah, I think the line is just about right. Wouldn't lean either to the over or the under here for Derek White and him scoring some points. His assist line at 4.5. He had five assists in that last game. I would honestly lean to the under. I lent to the under in that last one. You got them some bullshit assists in that one. Not creating too much stuff on offense. So I'd lean to the under in his assists. His rebounds at 3.5. He's covered this in seven out of his last 10 games. But against Dallas, he's covered this in two out of his last five. So yeah, there's nothing from Derek White that really gets me excited. So I won't be playing anything on him. Let's take a look at old man Al Horford. Now, we bet on Al Horford in the last game. When I say we, I meant me and whoever followed me. 6.5 was the line, though. Now, in his last 10 games, he's covered in five of his last 10. In head-to-head matchups against Dallas, he's covered this in four out of his last five, averaging 11 points per game. 10 points in that last game, 12 and 11 in the other two games where he played against them this year. Minutes right where we well, right expected him to be, close to 30 minutes a game for Al Horford. He took eight shots. He made two of five three-pointers. Uh, but this line has moved to full points. 8.5, it's probably enough to scare me off. I'd probably lean to the over still, but it's moved to a point where I don't feel there's much room for error. His three-pointer line is at 1.5. He's cashed this in four or five games against Dallas. If we look at his last 10, five out of his last 10. So, yeah, I think they're going to leave him wide open again. And I think he's good enough to make two. But at minus 130, not something I necessarily want to entertain. His rebound line is at 6.5. He's covered this in three or five games against the Mavs. Seven in that last game, 29 minutes. He did have 12 rebound chances. But again, like all these Boston players went over their rebound line in that last game, apart from Derek White. Will those chances still be there if the Dallas Mavericks improve? So I'm not saying the Dallas Mavericks do improve. I think they will, but um, that's the risk. And this is why we all like sports betting, right? Anything can happen. So Al Horford, I'm choosing not to play anything on him. The point sign, I loved it in the first game. It's moved up already. And, you know, he's going to bounce back down eventually, right? Let's see if there's anyone else with a bit of value to go through. And look, nothing's really sparked my interest there. We've gone through all the key players, but it's going to be a great game. I honestly can't wait to watch this one. I've got a few bets placed already. So if you're interested in tailing any of the bets that I decide to, to bet on, you can jump into my winnable. All the straight bets, they're all free. And I'll share those shortly after uploading this video, I'm sure. So check out my winnable. Link to that's in the video description below. If you want to check out Chalkboard, Double Fantasy, you've got a link for those in the video description as well. So suss those out. 
And if you want to check out my VIP plays, my VIP plays are your bitch ass parlays, your baps, your high value singles, and any value same game parlays that I come up with. So anything that's a little bit risky goes into my VIP. The chances of hitting are lower, but the potential profit is sky high. So feel free to check it out. You can buy the monthly pass, or you can just buy the VIP pack uh, picks for this particular game. I've got it for 10 bucks. So if you've got a free 10 bucks laying around and you want to get these VIP plays, feel free to check those out. All of it is on Winnable. But best of luck to you. Best of luck to me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Sub to the channel because your boy's getting busy. Coming to you live from the west side of Sydney. We've got the free picks and the juice on the daily. It's all free. You don't even have to pay me.